what's going on everyone it's marcellus back with another video and we got to go over to crypto market today because looking at the crypto market we are starting to come back here but there are a little bit of losses here but still we're getting a little bit you know day by day 4.7 percent for the last 24 hours for bitcoin it's 5.6 percent for the last seven days for bitcoin and then we have ethereum up 0.7 percent but everything is still looking relatively down i mean but all the other coins are kind of moving faster then, you know, the top ones like Ethereum, we have Dogecoin up only 0.7% and then down 14%. So everything is relatively still down. Remember, there's still FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt inside the market. So that is why we're continuing to drop here. We are seeing a lot of altcoins are actually gaining more momentum than, you know, the top ones like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Like this altcoin here being up a whole 2.9% in the last hour, 5.3% in the last 24 hours, 30% in the last seven days, 14% in the last 45 days. So yeah, even though there's been a lot of red inside the crypto market, we've actually had a lot of gains inside of a lot of different altcoins. This one's called Quant. Uh, I'm not too sure about all the stuff with this one, so I'm not going to talk too much about it because I don't want to spread no false information about it. But yeah, I will check out this one and I'll tell you all about it whenever I learn more about it. But yeah. There's a lot of other cryptos like this that are actually gaining a lot of momentum, even though there's a lot of FUD inside the market. There's a lot of them. So, yeah, I will be going over different cryptos in the future. But um, right now, we're just focused on the main ones. So without further ado, let's see what we have for the day. So the crypto wrap around for the whole week. Let's see what we had for the week. So let's see. Major players in the Indian crypto space like CoinDCX and WazerX have decided to go the self-regulation way by setting up an advisory board with the internet and mobile association of india so they are trying to do some regulations out there inside of india and regulations aren't necessarily a bad thing as long as they don't put too many regulations on it because regulations will actually cause the governments to invest more into crypto and they're not going to do it without putting regulations down so we do kind of need a little bit of reg a regulation in order to have the governments you know kind of just let us do our thing stop spreading spud uh not spud but uh, fud they're spreading so much FUD inside of the media. I mean, this is FUD itself. There's so much FUD. So the global currency market cap stands at $1.54 trillion, the global cryptocurrency market cap. So that's all cryptocurrencies, $1.54 trillion. Remember, um, Bitcoin was actually at $1.1 trillion. And at one point in time, it was at $1.1 trillion. So and all these cryptos all together end up to be $1.54 trillion. That's a lot of money. So from El Salvador accepting Bitcoin as a legal attender to India's reportedly softening stance on classifying Bitcoin as an asset. A lot transpired in the cryptocurrency last week. So yes, we know all about El Salvador accepting it as a legal tender and making a Bitcoin beach and so many other things, being able to purchase things inside El Salvador and then making 100% sustainable energy with their crypto mining using volcanoes. I mean, that's crazy right there. So yeah, in a historic first the Central American country of El Salvador passed a bill to recognize Bitcoin as legal tender. So with 62 favorable votes at, out of a total of 84, the country has set to open a wide range of possibilities. That's really huge for El Salvador. It's really huge for the whole crypto economy. So yeah, the country which falls under the 1500 kilometer long Central American volcano or volcanic arc. So yeah, they're going to be using volcanoes literally for the energy. It contains several active volcanoes as about to harness geothermal energies to power Bitcoin mining. That's huge. The country is currently developing a mining hub and a newly developed 95 MW well of 100% clean and zero emissions. So we know about this. This is about to be huge. The cryptocurrency mining market is expected to grow at a um, percent of 7% to almost $2.8 trillion by 2024. So they're saying the global market will be $2.28 trillion instead of $1.54 trillion. So that is big. And then we know about China's crackdowns on Bitcoin miners. Uh, it definitely sucks for people out there, but it's just how things are going. You know, it's up in it's, you know, the resistance on crypto is terrible what they're doing out there, but we can't really stop it. India may classify Bitcoin as an asset class. So that's pretty good that they're going to classify it as an asset class. And that is according to uh, Wazer X, DCX. But look at this. Parting from its earlier stance, India might classify Bitcoin as an asset class with securities and exchange board of India overlooking its regulation. The Indian cryptocurrency industry is currently consulting with the finance ministry for the first time or for the same. At present, uh, major players in the Indian crypto space like CoinDCX and WazerX, they're actually based out in India, have decided to go the self-regulation way by setting up an advisory board 
with the Internet and Mobile Association of India. So yeah, they are regulating it themselves. That's actually pretty crazy that we have exchanges regulating stuff themselves. So that that speaks volumes right there. So ED serves notice to Wazer X founder demanding an explanation for cryptocurrency transaction worth uh, 2,971 core under the FEMA Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999. And all right, so as per the. Uh, the directorate, uh, why am I getting twisted up here? The high directorate, RS57 core was laundered by Chinese nationals who deposited money in their Wazer X wallet and subsequently converted it to Tether. The company on their part has assured investors of the safety of their money and said that it has been complying with all necessary norms. So we still have different stuff going out here with different regulations and, you know, all FUD, fear, uncertainty and doubt and stuff. So like Trojan Shield delivers a heavy blow to the crime world. And remember a lot just how it happened. They actually just now got money back from the whole whole crime thing that was happening with Bitcoin. Too much. I mean, there's I, I just wish all the criminals would stop using crypto because that's really the only thing keeping us down right now. But well, let's read this. Landing a solid punch to organized crime, the FBI managed to monitor real-time conversations between criminal gangs, drug peddlers, and assassins through its encrypted app called Anom. The result, the operation managed to seize more than 33, 32 tons of drugs drugs like that's a lot 32 tons of drugs i mean 250 are firearms and 48 million dollars in fiat air cryptocurrency and three-year investigation resulted in the arrest of more than 800 criminals in 16 countries and it, this was literally like organized crime in one organization literally and they were doing this all on crypto so that just makes us all look bad so anyway while they're flaring tensions as officials struggle to regulate crypto popular investment management company Investco announced the launch of two cryptocurrency related ETFs. So yeah, we're going to have crypto ETFs now. They're just going to be Dogecoin on the ETFs. Pretty much any any coin you can think of, they're going to be on the ETF. Ethereum on the ETF, Bitcoin on the ETF. The Bitcoin mining cancel helmed by MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor said that this was a voluntary and open form of Bitcoin miners were to promote transparency. So that's pretty cool right there. They're being transparent about this notability. All major cryptocurrencies have seen a sharp dip. Yes, we definitely know that. There's definitely no doubt about that. We've had a huge dip here with crypto, but I'm not worried. I still have my diamond hands. I'm holding it for a long term. I don't care about short term gains. But more US finance giants tiptoe into crypto assets. More people are getting into it. So look at what we have here. JP Morgan Chase, you know, one of the biggest banks out there. My own personal advice to people, stay away from it. Look at them. Spreading FUD, spreading FUD, spreading FUD. But they're tiptoeing into it. Look, they're tiptoeing into it. They're telling you to stay away from it while they're putting money into it. This is what the this is what the banks do. This is what the big, the big people do. This is what they do. They spread FUD about it. And then the second you sell it out and the price goes down, they put their money into it. Literally, these whales, these banks, these institutions, what uh, Meek Heaven calls them, the suits, they are not looking out for your best interest. They care nothing about you. Look at this. They're saying their own personal advice, stay away from crypto. And the chief executives uh, from the JP Morgan Chase said that. And then they said, that does not mean the clients don't want it. So they're saying clients want it, but they're saying stay away from it because they want to profit off it first before you get into it. So JP Morgan, the biggest US bank by assets, is currently assessing how it can help clients transact in crypto. So they're trying to help people transact in crypto right now. But honestly, I would not listen to anything that any of these whales or these suits are saying because they're trying to get into crypto themselves. So the chief executives of Wells Fargo, Citigroup, and Bank of America, remember these are like the three biggest banks inside America, said at a congressional hearing in late May that they are approaching the cryptocurrency landscape with caution. So look, they tell you that they're approaching it with caution as they continue to put money into it, as they continue to have financial advisors advise them on when to buy. So they're literally waiting for the whales to just sell out and sell out and sell out. And right at the bottom, they're going to buy it. So and when you hear them saying that they're cautious about it, they're cautious about it right now because they know what the FUD is doing to it. They know because they're causing the FUD. They're telling you to be cautious, causing FUD. So, I mean... It's just crazy what's going on. That's why I, I like going over stuff like this because it's a whole contradiction in itself. So why some cri cyber criminals are ditching Bitcoin for a cryptocurrency called Monero. So yeah, cyber crimes are happening and they're trying to get away from Bitcoin because Bitcoin, a lot of people could track Bitcoin very easily. But then when you have other altcoins, you know, the, the feds, they don't know about these other altcoins. I didn't even know. I didn't know much about Monero until I started looking it up today. And a lot of different altcoins, 
like they, they just don't know about it look with monero there's um with a with monero they're up obfuscating i don't why do they have to use these random words i just this kind of aggravates me like obfuscating like come on Obf obfuscate. obfuscate okay obfuscate render obscure unclear or unintelligible like come on why do you have to use these type of words like i, I guess they just want to sound smart okay so the wallet addressed the amount of the transactions who the counterparty was which is pretty much exactly what the bad actors want so whatever i just i hate all this fud and i hate all the limitations with you know crypto and all let's read the monero's limitations though there are however a few major barriers when it comes to the mainstreaming of monero for one it's not as liquid as other cryptos many regulated exchanges blah 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 blah. they're pretty much talking about how there's limitations to it so people can't just completely jump out or not not just people remember criminals can't just completely jump out of bitcoin and expect to be safe inside monero because there's still limits so that's what we're seeing there. So another thing, Bitcoin may have to tumble below 30,000 before major buyers are alerted back in, says JP Morgan's Chase expert. So what did I say earlier? They literally want the price to continue to drop so then they can buy at the lowest point possible. And they're telling you it. They're telling you it in such a slick way that you actually believe they have your best interest. Look, they're so slick about it. Let's reread this and then explain what they're saying. Bitcoin may have to tr tumble below 30,000 before major buyers are lured back in, says JP Morgan Chase. Let's read it again. Bitcoin may have to tumble low 30,000 before major buyers are lured back in. Pretty much what they're saying is before they invest a lot of money into Bitcoin and make the price go up artificially, they want to see it drop below 30,000 so then they can get the best value of their dollar. They want you to lose your money so then they, when they put their money in, they gain way more money. They don't care about you. They just want the price to go down so then they can benefit for themselves. That is exactly what that says right there. Bitcoin may have to drop below 30,000 to lure back institutional investors. Cough, cough, JB Morgan and Chase, a JB Morgan Chase strategist said, literally, I told you, they literally have strategists and analysis looking at Bitcoin and looking at all these cryptos, telling them exactly when they want to invest and exactly when to do it. So what they're doing here, they're like, look, wait for it to drop below 30,000 because we're going to artificially lower it. And then when we do that, we're going to get in and then we're going to pretty much slap them in their face and buy their bitcoins for a lower price that is what's happening here and it's it's disgusting what's happening i mean it happens all the time with institutional investors if you ask right now in institutional investors whether fifty thousand or sixty thousand is looking like an attractive level for bitcoin they will most likely say no obviously because they want you to sell it at the lowest possible price so then they can buy it back down at the bottom they're not going to buy at fifty thousand or sixty thousand they're buying when it when it's at thirty thousand they're buying it when it's at twenty five thousand if it reaches there because they want to make the most profit and they care nothing about the smaller investors so that's what we have for there i know I, i'm brutally honest with everything okay so the sunday effect sends crypto crashing on weekends which means it might never go mainstream look this is more fud this same article has been rewritten about 10 times by yahoo finance they literally rewrote the same article about 10 times talking about how the weekends are so bad for crypto and how it'll never go mainstream because we're always going down on sunday hmm so if we said the same thing about the stock market, ooh, the stock market will never go mainstream because it's closed on Saturday and Sunday. That's exactly what they're saying. Like, it makes no sense. The stock market has been mainstream since day one, literally for a whole century. And yes, they're closed on Saturday and Sunday. Big whoop. Yes, Bitcoin goes down on Saturday and Sunday. Big whoop. You know, it's the same thing as the stock market. So more FUD right there. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt by people who know absolutely nothing about the crypto space. So there you go there bitcoin just got its first makeover in four years which will help compete with ethereum so the first bitcoin upgrade in four years has just improved by miners around the world it's called taproot and it's due to take effective inside of november the upgrade will mean greater transaction privacy and efficiency and crucially it will unlock the potential for smart contracts a key feature in this blockchain technology so just like ethereum has blockchain has smart contracts we're about to get that inside of bitcoin and the upgrade will also mean greater transaction privacy and efficiency meaning it will be way quicker to send your crypto to your other um wallets I'm, i remember times of sending crypto to my wallet and i had to wait a few hours it's about to be instant inside november and it's about to be way more private i mean looking you could look up anybody's transaction history right now like with any wallet as long as you know who who the wallet belongs to you can look it up right now so they're 
they're gonna make it more private so this is actually really good news here so more private more transparent and also we are going to have it more efficient so we're going to have quicker trades so that's another thing we have going on here let's look at the next thing we have all right so like i said more fud is crypto too risky 12 experts weigh in and i don't know if i even want to read all this 12 experts this is going to be doing fud i know you guys don't want to read all of this it's just fud they're weighing in is it risky or not let's just go all the way to the end in the end one volatility is to be expected yes that is definitely right i agree with him there don't panic at the first sign of trouble i agree with him on that never buy never borrow money to buy crypto i definitely agree with him on that so the first two things they are definitely right build up an emergency fund of three to six months expenses before buying any crypto i believe in that too at this stage where its real world uses are limited although quickly expanding as most common use is still as an investment option so yeah don't invest more than what you're willing to lose so another thing do your research before buying and know how to keep your tokens safe so they're definitely right on that so there is good news there so another thing three common misconceptions debunked so I actually did something on this earlier in another video, but I'll go over it again. Cryptos are for illegal and criminal dealings, which is a misconception. Cryptos will be outlawed by governments and will put to an end. No, that's also a misconception because the government wants crypto to live on because they know they can profit so much off of it. And anything that the government will profit off of, they're going to promote it. Whether it be crypto or drugs, they're going to promote it. And why did I say drugs? Hmm, cough, cough, the war on drugs. They're, they're making money off of that. Like, come on. Like we all know this yes drugs are bad i know this i don't like them either but let's just face it the war on drugs has been an ongoing thing that has been making the government make so many profits so yes the drug dealers are making profit as well as the government so there's just corruption 101 for you and then cryptos are complicated which they really are not complicated that's another mixed concession indian government may regulate crypto as asset class we already talked about this but it's actually really 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 critical that you understand this an asset class literally an asset class so it's just like real estate is an asset class just like stock market is the asset class they're going to make crypto an asset class well they're they're considering it as an asset class they're considering it so that's just what we have in the crypto space today but remember i'm not a financial advisor it's not financial advice but if you like this video go ahead and hit the like button subscribe and check out the link in the description for a free stock with robin hood and weeble and i'll be back with another video